Arthur, how are you? Hey, good. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, just a few things that I've got first. Um, Kyle Pitts yesterday was talking about how you've really helped him, I guess, manage through this season. H how do you feel like you've gone about doing that? Well, well I mean, I'm not going to get into specifics here, but uh, just like every player, everybody's dealing with different things, and it's not one size fits all, Michael. That's why I try to build relationships to get to know the player a a as a person. Uh, so you understand maybe some of the issues they're, they're going through, whether it's on the field or off the field. Is that something that, I mean, have you, have you dealt with a guy kind of like him before? Or is this almost a little bit new territory for you between being a head coach and, and kind of the season that he's having as a rookie? I mean, everybody's different. You just, you know, go off all your past experiences dealing with different players. And um, like I said, you, everybody's, everybody's different. It's not one size fits all. So uh, very pleased with Kyle and how he's handled this year. And like I said yesterday, I think the exciting thing is, you know, he's just getting started. And one thing with Cordero, he was on kick return yesterday for the first time in a while. What went into the decision to put him back there again? Well, we thought it was the best uh, for the team. We thought it was the best chance we had uh, some of the matchups in the return game. They did a nice job covering. Uh, we'll continue to evaluate that every week. Whatever we think gives us the best chance to win. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty simple. If uh, we know how we make our decisions, did he lobby at all for it? Because I know that that's something that you know, special teams really matters. It seems to him. Does he was he sitting there and lobbying to get back there? Or we got a lot of guys that lobby for everything. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what we're going to do. Um, you know, you want everybody to want to help any way they can. So I think we got a lot of guys that that chip in on special teams. Usually, if you're a pretty good team. Uh, your better players help in some way on special teams. Thank you. Thank you. Josh? Arthur, do you think that Foyer's development is more attributable to his physical gifts or his mental approach? Well, you got to be physically talented to play in the NFL. I think that's what gets lost sometimes in perspective is how tough it is to play in the NFL and, and to, to play at a high level week after week. You obviously got to be physically talented. Now, there's a lot of talented guys that can't sustain that or, or you know, whatever circumstances, you know, hold them back. Uh, with a guy like Foyer, you know, as he's continued to play, uh, he's really taken charge of this defense. I mean, he runs the show out there. So uh, he's embraced his role and run with it this year. It's been fun to watch his progress. When you're game planning for a defense, how – Easily identifiable is it if if the middle linebacker is is kind of locked in and knows you know is mentally sharp and versus a guy who you feel like you might get away with a few things and where does Foyer fit in that spectrum? Well, I think he's a he's an ascending player. Uh, we've got some really good inside linebackers in this division. Josh, it's a good question. Um, certainly, when you're playing at that position. Uh, you know, it's a it's a chess match. You know, the, I just think on top of my head that Demario Davis is the uh, yeah. Devin White, uh, Shaq Thompson, guys are in there that are really good players, really instinctive. Um, it's that's what's fun about this, and I got a lot of great appreciation for those type of players. And it'll do the same thing with Edmonds and Milano this weekend up in Buffalo. So, uh, you know, I think he's an ascending player. I, you know, I don't love comparisons, as, as you guys know, but uh, I, I, I'm happy with the way he's progressing. Thanks, Art. Thank you. Tori? Yeah, I just wanted to go back to kind of what you were talking about, Kyle, really quickly. Do you almost feel like that Kyle's achievements are, and, and the record's broken and everything are almost like overshadowed by the fact that he was kind of expected to do all of this and everybody's just kind of like, oh, yeah, he was supposed to do this, so that's cool. But really no one really understands kind of essentially how big of a deal this is for a tight end, a rookie tight end. Yeah, I think things can get lost like that because there was so much hype to start out with. It does uh, kind of jade your thought process there. Um, you're saying, all right, well, you know, he's supposed to do that. Well, it's not it's not easy to do that. And a lot of guys <clears throat> throughout professional sports with that kind of hype coming in, they, they don't handle it well. Uh, Kyle certainly has. And that's not lost on us here. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. D-Led. What's up, D-Led? 
Hey, Coach, how are you doing today? Good, you? All right, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Hey, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, how are you uh, handling the playoff scenario with the team? Well, like, uh, it's really pretty simple, d -Led. Nothing else matters but trying to win the game this weekend. So it, it, we just got to try to win every game in front of us, and then it'll work itself out the way it's supposed to. And if, you know, there's some things that you can control, there's some things out of our control, but don't. The, the main focus is Buffalo. There's nothing else that matters. And, uh, you know, Buffalo, uh, you know, was doing a little bit of work on them in between calls. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, I guess, had a big game. And uh, Jared Allen uh, is, you know, a running quarterback, big guy. Is he, he going to rush the passer? Pardon me? Is Jared Allen going to rush the passer? No, no, the, the other – Josh Allen, I'm Josh sorry. Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get my, I get my Josh's and Jared. You're back in the, you're back up in the NFC North there. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, I did have to vote for him recently, so. Oh, that's good. Oh. Yeah, but, uh, but okay, give me a little bit on the Bills and the problems they present. Is you all try to play, you know, get a, a win against a team with the winning record? Yeah, well, if Miami wins tonight, does, does that change that narrative for you? Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to hold yeah, off from typing that one out there. Yeah, yeah, I'll go back and say, hey, they do have a win over team with a winning record now. Oh, hold on. Let me fact check this. Are both teams 7-7? Seven and seven? Uh, Yes. And so that's whoever wins is going to have a winning record unless they tie. Oh, you're so good. Okay, for, yeah, give us go. a win over hey, somebody with a record. You see how I did that? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I can write Tuesday's story right now for you. That's good stuff. Appreciate the help. Yeah, no problem, man. Just more I can do to help you out. Um, yeah. All serious, there's no back to Buffalo. Uh, they're they're a really good football team. They have been a uh, little familiar there with playing them the last couple of years when I was in Tennessee. Uh, good scheme, fast defense. They've invested a lot in that front seven. Uh, it's, I said they're, they're the number one ranked defense in the league for a reason. Uh, explosive players on offense. Uh, they present a lot of problems. We're gonna play. We got to play really well. To go up there and on the road up in Buffalo. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Charles. You spoke um, uh, in your opening remarks uh, after the game about uh, creating a winning culture, and I can only imagine that's something you could you could talk an hour and a half about, and and it's very involved. Um, but uh, yesterday, really the. Um, uh, definition of the kind of game that the Falcons would have lost maybe in the uh, last season or the season before. What are the signs that you look for to determine that you are indeed, other than making those kind of plays that Foyer made, that to, 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 I'm sure there's more to it than that in terms of what you're looking for when you say a winning culture. Yeah, I think it's mentality, uh, the approach in the building every day. Obviously, you know, when you feel good about your your process and the way you're doing things, you, you need results. Um, you know, we, we know there's a lot of work to do and eventually to get this thing sustaining to the way we want to, to ultimately win a championship. And then that's our goal. Um, it, it does, you do see things, if you can go out there and close games, you're going to be, you're going to be in a lot of one possession games. It's the way the league's set up and you have to have a certain mentality. Can you handle situational football? Uh, which I think we've done and, and, a lot of critical moments this year when the games have been close in the fourth quarter. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, uh, but I think our guys are aware of what's going on. They understand that it, you play every down, and you, it's hard. It's you're fighting a human nature to ride the emotional roller coaster, but you've got to you've got to kind of kind of be neutral with what happens during the course of a game, uh, so you can impact the next situation. And I think that's what we did. Obviously, we wanted to close the game out. Ball comes out. Uh, you know, Reeve Maven makes it makes a play. We don't we don't execute. They execute better than we do, but there's still plenty of football. And we can go. We can still win the game. And I think that's says a lot about the character of your team and kind of what what I consider the ethos. You know, what we're made of. Do you believe that uh, success in the in the closing minute uh, uh, creates the confidence the next time your team is in a similar situation? Yeah, I think that's important because you're not wishing and hoping. You've done it. And that's, you know, you're, you're trying to break through. And those, that's one of the steps, you know, to break through that obstacle. Uh, you know, I feel we have more times than not. We know, like I said a minute ago, we know there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but thankful for this opportunity 
that uh, we're we're still relative right now, and uh, and going to this game, whatever the odds are. I mean, this is this is a huge game for us. Michael, any follow-ups? Yeah, this might be a little bit out there, but how do you choose the words you use with the team? And by that, I mean like words like ethos and and some other phrases that you've used, you've talked about with us, and then it seems like players will will use after that. Like, how do you decide which words, which kind of phrases that you want to kind of go with? Well, I mean, I, I guess I should correct myself what I just told Charles. I mean, relevant, I guess, would be a better word there. If we're going to use the language right. Sorry, Charles, I was rambling there. Um, it's it's really just the things I believe in. And I've probably, Michael, all my past experiences, maybe things that I, I've read, I've learned, and things I believe in. I, I don't try hard to be anybody but myself. So, um I don't know, Michael. I, I know you're looking for a deeper meaning there. I don't have one for you. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't sure whether that was, you know, something you really like, like spent a bunch of time thinking about versus, like you said, just kind of part of you. Well, I certainly don't try to wing it. Yeah. I do put thought into it. Cool. Appreciate it. No problem. Josh? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. D-Led? Come on, D-Led, you got to have something else. Uh, of course I do, Coach. Um, All right. You know, I know you've been talking about the linebackers, but uh, what about, um, you know, the job Brandon Copeland did? Uh, you know, I watched him a lot yesterday. Looked like he, you know, he doesn't – maybe doesn't make the tackle, but he's always in the right spot to help out on the defense. Well, he's a smart football player, a liable player. That's why he's uh, played as long as he has, and he uh, he's a guy that's – you know, uh, I kind of call it come up the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we we crossed paths years ago in Tennessee when he was on our practice squad and I was running the scout team. Uh, so you, when things come around full circle, uh, obviously Frank Bush coached him at other spots, and then I had familiarity familiarity with him, and um, I got so much respect for him. D led, he's a, he's a good pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richie Grant, uh, you know, folks. Uh, or, you know, like to get that Rich Grant update. How did he do in the game yesterday? Which folks? Uh, you know, my Twitter people and my followers and so forth. Have you verified that you don't have bots following you? Who? Okay. Um, well, look, all of our rookies, you know, we're looking for them to improve. Uh, like almost every player coming out of game, D-Led, he, he did some good things. And it's always things that uh, we'll continue to work on with him. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Tori? No, I'm good. I'm still on the bot comment. That was great. <laughs> Charles, do you have anything? No, but I will take note that you, uh, uh, Coach, you missed the opportunity to uh, comment to D-Led about uh, scoring near the goal line when you weren't in a power uh, formation last night. Well, you had a point. I mean, I you use all different schemes down there. It's a good question. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, got got out there on the perimeter there on on a toss play, so that worked for us. And then the uh, the action there to Hayden, so. All right, Michael, see you raising your hand. Yeah, I just want to know if you're an egg or a bot somewhere that we should be aware of. I know I I got off years ago. Um, try to try to stay informed, but uh, I won't go under that into that toxic uh, wasteland there. So, I know I don't I don't have a burner account. Just, just checking. That's a good question. I bet there's some people around this business that do. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.